I'm your host, Dr. Joe Dispenza. Let's begin. They look like a normal person. They don't look like a, a movie star. They're not young and buffed and fit and look a certain way. They're just an average person. And they tell their story and it's not glamorous, but they're triumphant and they kept overcoming and they kept showing up for themselves and kept believing in themselves. That's the four minute mile. That's that person that pierces a level of consciousness that says it's possible. Not only is it a footprint in the field, quantum field, but it's also evidence in three-dimensional reality and people lean in and this is the cool part they lean in because there's truth looking them right in the face and they'll say if that person can do it i can do it too and just like an infection spreads amongst the community and creates disease health and wellness becomes as infectious as disease in our in our events we see people I just watched a, a testimonial yesterday of a guy who came in a wheelchair. I mean, he was, he couldn't walk. He couldn't take more than a few steps. Very debilitating neurodegenerative disease. He leaves the event, he leaves his wheelchair and his walker and it's not the first person that happens. So that's evidence, you know? So then we started partnering with universities and we said, okay, some of these people are having dramatic changes in their hearts, in their brains. And we started working with universities that have the sophisticated instrumentation to measure cellular biology. Thousands and thousands of metabolic reactions that are taking place and looking at the plasma and blood of people that do meditation. And we started seeing then when we subjected their blood uh, to like a virus that behaves exactly like the COVID virus, that their body was immune. Uh, to the virus, the advanced meditators, it wouldn't enter the cell. And this is super compelling data because that says that, that there's something within us uh, that really, really has a, a, a profound immunity to the environment. And we've isolated now the factors in the blood of advanced meditators that are so important for, for, for that. And then we started taking the advanced meditators' blood and subjecting it to cancer cells uterine cancer cells and seeing how the mitochondria which are the engines of the cells that keep the cancer cell almost immortal drive the energy out of the mitochondria by 75 percent took the wind out of the cells of cancer cells we see people that have a, we, we take advanced meditators blood and we subject it to people with uh, neurons that have alzheimer's and all of a sudden you see the gene down regulated so there's something in the plasma that is, makes us very hopeful about human potential and the real key element, the most important element is it's not anything out there that's gonna do it, it's all in here. And so, super hopeful, super excited about some of the stuff we're doing. We're, we're, I just was on the phone with a, a researcher, one of our researchers uh, beforehand here and before I got on this uh, podcast. And, uh, this is a very empirical, well-published scientist that is so incredibly excited about what we're doing. So we have um, been on such, a, such an amazing journey. I, I consider myself a pretty open-minded person. I mean, I have a pretty good bullshit meter too. Like I, I have a truth <laughs> meter that like I just, I'm a, I'm a practical person. Yeah. I don't want to talk about quantum superposition if it doesn't change my life in any way. I want to know how it's going to affect my life. I'm a, I'm a pragmatist. Mm -hmm. So I consider myself a pretty open-minded person, but I have, you know, I'm skeptical about things because I want to challenge them in a way that I think it really helps people, right? So <clears throat> when I saw, you know, some of the dramatic changes take place, I was, I, 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 I never thought in my lifetime that I would be witnessing what I'm in, what I witness in every single week-long event that we've done, and we've done 30 of them now, and it's never been a disappointment. There's just a transformative thing that takes place that is way bigger than me. So when you see a person with a stroke who's blind in the quarter of their vision or has paralysis and can't move an arm, and you see that vision completely restored, and then you see <clears throat> The scan that shows there's no longer any blemish or damage to the visual field. You just, you can't go back 
to business as usual. You can't go back to being the same person. You, once you know, you can't not know. <laughs> and, and, and it's so beautiful because consciousness is awareness. And awareness is noticing and paying attention. So when you see a person who has a transformation and you see the science that says in a week long event, there'll be over 600 metabolic changes in 75% of the audience for the better in a one week event. When you, when you know that, you're now you're aware of another possibility that may not be the possibility that we think is free will to choose from knowns. This is now, you're stepping outside. <clears throat> and when a person shows up and believes in themselves and does the work, <laughs> they're believing in possibility. You cannot believe in possibility and, and, and believe in yourself. You, not believe in yourself. You gotta believe in yourself and believe in possibility. You gotta believe in possibility. You gotta believe in yourself. So. For me personally, I, I, it's way bigger than me. I'm very humbled on a regular basis. Every time I get another testimonial, uh, I say this person is speaking the truth. And, and it's, it's a footprint for somebody else to step into. And I think the world needs that more than ever. So for me, um, my greatest passion, my greatest joy, I think there's some, there's something in us, Glenn, that's so empathetic. Uh, now we're, we're, we have universities that are studying, we're studying people that can be healed remotely. You don't even need to be in their presence if you understand the science of quantum physics and you understand how to do it. You can hit a target and heal another person at a distance and there it is and there it's gone. Now, when you see that occur, there's some kind of empathy. I, I drop in on the calls of these people that show up every single day of their life to heal another person. And they do at least three or four a day. And these people, they're not doing it because they want to be a healer. They're doing it because, well, how they feel when they see a mother who comes on the sh Zoom call and says, my daughter was you know, a handicap from birth. She had a traumatic birth. She's listless, unresponsive, never looked at her brothers. And all of a sudden, this kid is smiling at her brothers and trying to talk. And you watch the people on the Zoom call that are the healers. You see we're all in tears. There's this empathy that takes place where we're contributing as a species to one another, that we were part of somebody's transformation. We gave in some way. Another one of us is better and this kind of feeling of empathy, this feeling of connection is so profound that goes against all those uh, survival and stress emotions that create division and polarity and separation and, and distrust. And, and so that's when community starts coming together. That's when we start to collaborate, cooperate, and, and, it, and it's gotta be from the heart. So I'm super hopeful about um, well, what, what we're doing. <laughs>